Are we religious for show or to sow? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. There is a story of two Civil War generals, George A. Custer and Ulysses S. Grant. Both graduated from West Point. General Grant, being the oldest, graduated in the 1840s and General Custer in 1861. Grant fought in several wars and was a field general in every sense of the word. In 1865, he was the one who forced Robert E. Lee to surrender to the North. At the surrendering ceremony, Grant wore a mud-splattered uniform of a private with general shoulder pads sawed on it. He was the picture of a man who was a worker and had just finished a job. He said he took no glory in the surrender of a fellow general. General Grant was a humble man and an excellent leader. When General Custer graduated from West Point, he went from second lieutenant to brigadier general in less than two years. When he assumed command of his brigade in 1863, he wore a black velveteen uniform with gold braid from the elbows to the cuffs of his sleeves and a golden feather in the hat band of his dress hat. He was known to have the brashest of attitudes and a personality that one newspaper columnist of the time described as the personality of a childish upstart. General Grant listened to his advisors and led his troops into victory, winning nearly every battle he fought. General Custer led his troops into a deathly defeat at the Battle of Little Bighorn. He had been given advice to detour and go to another front, but the general knew best and rejected the advice of his second-in-command. He ordered a full attack. The only living survivor of that brigade was one horse. Custer dressed to impress. Grant dressed for work. Custer wanted to be noticed. Grant wanted to win. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus impresses upon us the importance of focusing on what will make us holy rather than on the folly of our rigid observance of religious rituals. While observance of religious rituals are important, we must use them to aid us in our pursuit of holiness, essentially ensuring we do not neglect the commandment of love for our neighbors, such as justice, compassion, and fidelity. Jesus shows us several examples. The Mosaic law requires tithing of the produce of the land, but the Pharisees have extended this law to even the smallest herbs. He criticizes not the practice of tithing, but the preoccupation of the Pharisees to matters of less importance while neglecting the weightier things of the law. Another example, the law forbids eating of swarming creatures which are considered unclean. Pharisees and scribes go to the extent of using a cloth to filter the wine being poured on a cup to prevent accidentally drinking a gnat, a tiny insect, while swallowing a camel. Swallowing a camel is a hyperbole to mean neglecting what is more important. And still another, washing of the cups and dishes are referred to to emphasize the concern of the Pharisees for external appearances while inner purity is ignored. We do not have to look far to see how we can be so obsessed with our own religious observances and yet fail to exercise compassion and understanding on others. How many times have we harshly judged people, say, inside the church who do not wear the prescribed attire? We may be in the habit of criticizing people of their looks, attire, manner of speech, behavior, and lifestyle while ignoring our own faults and weaknesses. How many times have we been prideful of our religious observances going to church, praying the rosary, saying our novenas, all on a daily basis, yet failing to be patient, forbearing, and forgiving, on people who cut us in traffic, who insert themselves in a line which we have been in for a length of time, on co-workers and subordinates who commit a mistake, on fellow community members who hurt us. We show good behavior when we are with others, but beneath that layer are sins of self-indulgence, an inability to control our urges and addictions to alcohol, drugs, pornography, gossip, shopping, eating, and so on and so forth. These hidden sins distance us further from our God, slow us down in our journey of holiness. All the laws that we follow, all the rituals that we observe, all these must be rooted in the commandment of love, love of God and neighbor. When we are able to sow goodness around us, banking on God's own goodness to us, we will surely be noticed by our Lord for the right reasons, for the right to be with Him someday. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, beyond the trappings of my own religiosity, may I be trapped in your love that allows me to be free to give that love generously to all. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.